Hello there guys, Billabo10000 here, bringing you another episode of Into the Depths. This is episode 10, and in this episode, we're going to continue into this lovely chapel that I've just found. Also, goodbye seeds. Cutscene 4. You walk through the door and examine the hall. Every inch of the place, every bit as dusty as the castle and hospital. No sign of life. You think to yourself, this is the last stop. Shkusta has to be around here somewhere. Suddenly you hear a voice. You recognize it. It's the voice of the strange mechanical monster you encountered in the sanitarium. You can't pinpoint where the voice is coming from. It echoes through the hall. When are you going to stop playing games with us, he asks. Confused, you respond, us? Who is us? Where are you? He sighs. You still haven't figured it out. Most realize what is happening by now. You're not making our job any easier. We've given you just about everything you needed for you to snap, but you're resistant. At this point, you lose your patience. Nothing has made sense since you arrived at the castle. What the fuck are you talking about? Why have I not gotten any answers from you or Marlene? Since I got here, I've seen things my own eyes had trouble believing. Even outside, this place is impenetrable. It's like it's trapping me inside. And then all those monsters. When will it end? The voice lets out a light chuckle. They look like monsters to you. You should take a look at yourself. As for Marlene, well, I'm surprised her very presence hasn't brought some sense to you. You need more work. You can't live in your personal fantasy forever. This is not the last stop. And with that, the voice ceases. You sit on one of the benches and think of what that said. I... I have to find the last golden apple. I know it's here somewhere. I know it. I did not expect the story to be so in-depth when I started this map. I am so happy that it's going to be full of the twists. A coffin. It looks like a funeral was taking place. Die! Thank you. Daycare center. The room smells nauseatingly of burnt flesh. Someone burnt the kids down. Wolfgang. Torch. Wolfgang had lived his entire life in poverty. The harsh living conditions he endured through childhood into early adulthood caused him to have to resort to stealing from upper-class citizens, just to survive day to day. Unfortunately, he wasn't very good at it and he was frequently caught. As a child, he was labelled the village troublemaker, but as he got older, he started spending more and more time in prison. During his last sentence, he shared a cell with a witch, an ugly old hag, but one with decades of knowledge and experience. Wolfgang befriended the witch, and over the course of many months they remained jailed, the hag taught him all about alchemy. In particular, she taught him how to create a stomach, a tonic that would turn him from a subpar thief into a legendary thief. Upon being released from prison, he saved every piece of gold he could, searched every cave, every dungeon he could until he had all the ingredients he needed. After weeks of preparation, he was ready to create the Potion of Invisibility. First, he boiled some water, then applied a strange otherworldly fungus called a netherwort, which he purchased from a black market dealer in the underbelly of the nearby town of Hort de Stille. Next, he added a carrot covered in the very gold he had saved for weeks, it was worth the money, he thought. Finally, a fermented spider eye, taken from a giant arachnid found in a nearby cave that had, lived, had taken the lives of many adventurers. With that, he created the invisibility potion. He would use it to pull off the greatest heist in his life. A few nights later was the night of the ball at the castle, a get-together of all the higher-ups within the province. It was a multi-night affair, and each attendant would be staying in their own rooms. So there Wolfgang went. He drank the potion and carefully walked in between the clouds, crowds of heavily guarded political figures. Over the course of a few hours, he had snuck in nearly every bedroom and stolen all the belongings of every important figure in the country. No one saw him, no one heard him, but they knew he was there. That night, Wolfgang became a legendary thief, a fable to most, and it changed his life forever. So, we're going to be making an invisibility potion, most probably. Also, is Wolfgang around here, maybe? I'm getting that feeling. Library. And what's the last room? Father Manfred. Look at Father Manfred first. Uh, confession booth key, torch, torch, gold ingot, and Manfred diary. Okay. I visited the prison today. An inmate named Frank Elias requested to speak with a priest, so I was asked. Needless to say, this is one of the more interesting meetings I've had with someone. I walked into a small room. The walls were bare, a small table in the center. At one end sat Frank. He looked as if he weren't exactly having a good time as of late. His prison uniform was noticeably tattered and dirty. He looked unwashed and smelled it too. 
his beard thick and hair long. This was definitely a man who deserved whatever came his way. I sat down. He politely greeted me. He was bound to the chair with chains, hands tied. He was no threat to me. Before I had a chance to say anything, he first began with an apology to God. He wanted to be forgiven for his sins, and he wanted his family to rest in peace. What he told me next was something I had heard about before, but never from the mouth of the person who experienced it. He told me that in the few minutes he had died, following the events that led to his imprisonment, he thought he was still alive. Elias, being a painter, said that the world he existed in took the form of a painting. Everything as an environment looked as if it had been created by the stroke of a brush. He said that looking back, he remembers seeing his family, his friends, only at the time he didn't know who they were. He said they had taken different roles from what they were to him, to him in real life. They acted differently. They didn't know him either. He described it as being dreamlike, every aspect of the dream reflecting something in his life. Everything was okay, though. He felt at peace. That didn't last long, though, as his dream took a turn for the worst, where he was forced to witness the death of his family over and over again, forced to relive those moments piling on the guilt. At this point, he was brought back to life by the medical staff at the hospital. I'm a believer, he says the doctors and the authorities don't believe him, but I do. However, I still have many questions before I can put together a solid conclusion as to what this phenomenon was. So... What I'm thinking... I think I'm Frank Elias. That's my theory. I think I'm Frank Elias. I think this is a form of... What's the word? I'm trying to think of a word. Many of my own books are here, but they're all blank. The titles remain, but no writing on the pages. I think he is kind of insane. Right, let's put you there, you there, you there, you there. Wait, no, because all the books are blank, aren't they? Uh, local Corrupt, Quiet Mountain, Blackout, Born from Dragon, Steel Cog, Liquid. Let's see. And there's honestly nothing in them. Okay. That's actually very interesting. It's It raises a lot of questions. Like, a hell of a lot of questions. Also, yay, we just got more stuff. Woo. I'm going to put the boat away. Actually, no, I'm going to leave the boat. I'm going to put the, the axe away because I don't think we need it. Actually, no, we might need it. I, I don't know. We might need it. I'm getting... Ugh, I hate it when that happens. Ah, store. Unlikely hero. What's the unlikely hero? Oh. <laughs> well. How much is steak? Because I've got 24. How much is a steak? Seven. Okay, I'm getting the steak. Because I need it. Seven. Thank you for the steak. See ya. <laughs> I don't think I want the gold chest plate. It won't really protect me for too long. To the confession key. Confession booth key. Ah, there's a door over there I didn't even notice. Um. Ah. I confess. Faja, I confess. Well, this doesn't look bad at all. Do what you m Do what you must. Oh, burn everything, burn, 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 everything must burn. You don't need to burn. It leads to a secret passage. I'm going to keep the flint and steel on me. I don't know if I'm meant to get rid of it, but I'm going to keep it, but I won't use it. Just because I like the name. Oh, man. Alright, I need to... Get you there, and you there. Steak and cooked pork chop. Cooked pork chop is less saturated, so. Oh, I really need to do what I must. I feel like this is coming up for some big reveal. I, I, because this, this feels so much like a big reveal moment. Oh, well, nope, it's not a big reveal, but it's definitely going to hell. Brilliant. We're going back to this hellhole. Everyone, get ready. We're going to hell. Oh. Just gonna wait and see if it loads. I'm just not gonna touch anything. It's not respond. Oh, there we go. Oh, brilliant. Oh, Yep, this is a thing.
and that's a face. I think I'm being very haunted right now by the souls of innocents that I have probably murdered. Crap, that was... thought it was a mob there. Oh. Well. This is kind of psychedelic. That's creepy. I don't think I'm in any danger of mobs. I think I'm just being... The fruits of your labor, monster. What? What the... I don't know. Obviously, I've done something horrific. Whoa! The pictures in these frames look like they can be removed. Alright, this is a store. Oh! <gasps> It's a wither skeleton! No! Oh, I'm gonna die in here. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. Otherwise, I'm gonna die. What? I set the place on fire, didn't I? I set that. Oh, I know what I'm gonna need to do. I'm gonna need to... I am going to need to create a potion of invisibility. Great. No nether wart, though. I have a fermented spider eye, poppy, golden carrot, sunflower. No nether wart. Go ahead, sleep in this bed, or this one, or this one, or this one. Or maybe even this one. This one is nice too. So many choices. You've always had a choice. Good grief. I don't know what to do. I... Okay. I need nether wart. I really need nether wart, maybe. That's a nicer way of saying it. Oh! None of the invincible mobs can see me, right? I'm, I'm hoping. You hear the screams from the burning room. Your head starts pounding. Oh, Christ. Kitchen. Uh, kitchen exit. Can I go in the kitchen? Can I access it? Can I do anything? At all? Or do I need to go back upstairs? I don't know. Oh. You are in the way. You're in the way. What do I... D what do I do? Three, two, one. Oh, hey, there's an exit key. Uh... Don't know what I do with it, but it's there. May as well use it. Lucky for me, I have three invincibility, invisibility potions in case I run out, so... Ah. You know, I would love to get in there, you know. I would I would love to. Seriously, I... How do you get past this guy? Oh, this guy found me. Crap. Kitchen key, okay. There's probably another exit key in here as well. I'd imagine so. Okay. Gonna drink another one just in case. No, I, I'm not here. 
I, I don't exist. Shut your mouth, you fat bugger. I'm not here. Shut up. I swear, I'm not here. Exit key two. And where would the third one be? That's my question. Alright, let's get the second one in at least. Okay, uh... Where's the third one? God damn it, where's the third one? Oh no. Oh. Is there something like there? Is there something I'm... There is something I am missing. There is something I am severely missing. And I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know what I'm missing. I am confused. I, I don't know at all. Again. Okay. This is the last time I'm going to look at the walkthrough. I promise. This is clay. I should have figured that one out myself. I'll be honest. I should have figured that one out myself. But I think... I was getting a bit stumped. I admit that was confusing me. Two voices are heard behind the window. Cutscene six. You win. Ha. Funny. Wolfgang, we don't need you anymore. You hear two voices coming from behind the window, both female. You recognize one as Marlene, but you can't quite pinpoint the other, though she sounds familiar. You press up against the window and listen. Good afternoon, Miss Shushka. Please call me Marlene. Okay. My name is Mary Schechter. I will be your therapist from here on out. Miss Heinrich tells me you've been through quite a lot lately. That's correct. So why don't you start by telling me about your husband? What has your marriage been like? Let's see, well, we've been married for over a decade now, but we've known each other since we were teenagers. Ever since I met him, he's a very reserved man. Well-mannered, sweet sunny. Hmm, clearly things didn't stay that way. No, no they didn't. I've lived the last few years of my life in fear of him. You see, my husband is a writer. He loves to write fantasy novels, the kinds with dragons and wizards, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm the husband. <laughs> His books never sold very well. Many failures caused him to turn to drinking, and as a result, I began to see a side of him I never knew existed. He'd be angry all of the time. He'd stay out late at the pub, come home covered in bruises and cuts. Eventually, those bruises and cuts made their way to me. It's been this way for about three years now. Have you told anyone that you've been living the last few years as an abused wife? You never reached out for help? Well, no. I mean, I still loved him. He was going through hard times, and I thought that he'd eventually come back around, but he never did. He eventually took a job at the mining company in town, but was naturally having a hard time, especially with his employer, Mr. Alban, who owned the pub my husband frequently, who the husband frequented. I paid regular visits with Mr. Alban, did everything I could to convince him to continue letting my husband work, to have as much patience with him as possible. Your husband says you were cheating on him. I'm assuming this was a misunderstanding. Yes, our neighbour, a lumberjack, the town drunk, at least before my husband took the title from him. He told my husband that I was visiting Mr. Alban. The authorities who spoke with him said the drunk had convinced him that I was sleeping with his employer behind his back. My husband lost it. He came to Mr. Alban's house while I was there. He set the building on fire from the outside. Before I even knew what was, uh, what was happening, we were surrounded by flames, and ended up passing out from smoke inhalation. Mr. Alban was caught in the flames. He was burned alive. And is this how you died as well? Yes. Okay, I didn't quite catch your husband's name. What is it? Arnold. Arnold Shuster. Oh. Am I the king? I... I have to drop, don't I? 